Water Buffalo TM is back with another Buff Talk. Three, two, one. What's going on, guys? It's Old School Matt here. We're back with another Buff Talk. Today, I'm joined by my friend of mine, Max Seeger, um, a.k.a. Guru Mac. Welcome to the show, Guru Mac. Hey, how are you? So Thanks today, for having me, Matt. Anytime. So today's podcast topic, we want to talk about you know, career success and personal development. Also having a little bit more of a focus towards, I would say problem solving and and just programming and coding and how it can help the average business um, person in today's world. And Mac has a a ton of experience, a ton of, you know, different types of roles he's played in the past. And he's, you know, one of, one of my mentors. Um, So I wanted to have him on and just kind of have open discussion about these topics. Yeah, definitely. Well, right now, Matt, he's a part of a mentorship program that I'm offering called Florida Full Stack where we basically take you from not knowing how to code uh, to within four months, um, being able to code and being actually able to apply to junior level roles, uh, junior level software development roles. And uh, so Matt's taking part in that and um, you're enjoying it. Yeah, 100%. And I think, um, you know, kind of backtracking on some conversations we had before we started the podcast is that, you know, people know me as, you know, finance, accounting, um, some specialization in specific insurance and whatnot, and just growing as a professional, I want to, you know, get my CPA and potentially do my CFA. But I think there are other avenues that also might benefit me as a professional. And some people might not think that, you know, finance or accounting kind of fits into the role of software development, but kind of we'll get to those topics later. Like, you know, how related or interrelated, you know, businesses are with the web and and with using, you know, as you say, software as a service and, and kind of moving everything over to that aspect of of life automation and and just getting, you know, more efficient things done with learning how to, with with programming. And a lot of people are still doing things, you know, in the, you know, old days. And I think that you helped me shift my mind from, you know, things are done this way, but things can be done differently and better. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think, um, as anyone who's interested in, uh, becoming successful in business, having um, the skill set to 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 code to to understand the different API services that are um, available to you um, just makes you a better business person and you know I know I've spoken to Matt and the other you know students about this but when you go to a website whatever it is any company why don't you scroll to the bottom and see if there is an API for that particular company and what type of data and or what type of um, transactions you can perform with said company. And so what that does is that opens you up to an entirely new world. And as technology continues to progress, do you want to be completely in the dark on how data is being transferred over the web? Or do you want to have somewhat of an idea? And I think having somewhat of an idea doesn't take a lot of effort, and um, and I think every business owner should do so. Um, every entrepreneur should learn how to code. In, in in my in my opinion, now do they need to get down in the nitty gritty and be able to completely implement an entire full stack application? No, but should they understand how data is transferred and how now we have all these different API services and how they're communicating, like what a webhook is, which you might not be familiar with um, yet. Yeah. Um, but that's just an example of, uh, uh, something that it, having, having that, having that knowledge might allow you to, um, solve business problems. Yeah. And just knowing what resources are available to you as a, as a business analyst or whatever your position are, even account and finance, um, anything that you do in, in the world of business, like Mac opened my eyes to is like, everything is being moved over to you said more of like that, uh, that technical mindset, you need to learn how to use programs, even if you don't know how to code, you need to learn how to use something like simple as Excel, for example, just starting there and, and, and having that that mindset shift of like, okay, these are mundane tasks that we do all the time. Is there a way I can automate this, make this better, make it more efficient. And not only does it make your life easier, it makes your workflows a lot better, right? Would you agree? Yeah, I agree. I think, um, I think having that at your at your arsenal is going to be uh, just so beneficial to your life. I think everyone should learn how to code. Um, even I can give you an example of something that is not business related, yeah. but um, I was trying to strip the uh, vocals out of uh, 
out of an audio uh, out of an MP3. Okay. Because I love the instrumental. I just wanted the instrumental. So there's a website that you can literally just upload it, mm-hmm. upload the MP3, and it strips it. But you gotta pay. What did I do? You wrote your own. Uh, no, I didn't write my own. Uh-huh. I just, you know, opened up the 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 inspect element. You know, the, oh, okay. the, the developer tools. Cool. And I started looking around the HTML, started looking at the JavaScript, and there it was. And then it was literally just copy and paste into a new tab, and boom. Is it? And I didn't have to pay. So sorry. Interesting. But but just 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 things like that. Um, knowing why things don't work. Like if if an app's not working, you can kind of infer why it's not working. Um, so anyway, and just just no, be, yeah. yeah, yeah. And we'll, I mean, we're gonna get into some. We're gonna talk about a lot of things, but like something you said. Um, a lot of the stuff that I do um, for work when it involves like research related topics is a lot of like kind of web scraping mm-hmm. and, and just learning how to manipulate, like you say, manipulate the DOM, like just being able to, you know, let's say I need a bunch of titles on a, on a list page. I can go into the HTML document and just, you know, export all those loop through them and, then, you know, find it. They're not trying to get technical, but it's a lot easier. So instead of having to go and type in something and then looking, copying and pasting it over, I can very simply, and you know, this is a very simple concept, just get all the information I need, mm-hmm. spend less time doing that, spend more time on doing things that matter. Well, what if you want to buy a pair of shoes? Mm-hmm. Okay. And you know, the shoe is going to be very popular or you've heard of these bots, yeah. right? Yeah. Build a bot. Okay. Well, all right. what if you want to make sure you're first in line for this amazing business opportunity? This is, this is theoretical, right? You're going to have to either hire a coder. It's, it's, it's going to be a blocker. As a business owner, do you want your progress to be thwarted by your inability to code is the question. Yeah, that's true. And like you talk about it a lot too. Like you don't have to get into the weeds, but even if you're a project manager or like a CEO or an executive, it's, it's beneficial to know what's going on on a high level. And some people get confused because of the abstractness of programming, but you know, and it's made me a better professional, not only with, you know, learning about the different stuff we're learning in Florida full stack, but like using Excel now, which is like a program built off of code. Obviously someone built Excel, but just having that mindset of, of problem solving. And that's, and that's, I think the bigger thing is like, you know, back in elementary school and in middle school, I, I was good at math, but I hated doing it. Um, as I got older, you know, high school and college, I started to figure out that like math and specifically higher levels of math, like calculus and stuff made your brain think in a different way. And then you start to apply that to other areas of life. People talk about the same parallel in the gym. Like if you can push yourself in the gym, you can kind of find out how to push stuff in life. But math specifically now, this um, software development, you know, this coding mentorship has taught me, you know, problem solving. And I think that's a huge skill that a lot of people haven't mastered. You never will master it, but you can get really good at it or Mm -hmm. better at it, you know? Yeah. And it's, it's not working. Why is it working? Figuring it out. And moving to the next step. Oh, still not working. And you'll find that yourself in that loop for a long period of time. And it's putting the time into problem solve and build that portion of your brain and skill set. So, yeah. yeah. When did you when did you decide you wanted to do software or computer science in college? Yeah. So um, I originally went into college with like this. I, for whatever reason, got into math my um, senior year of uh, high school okay. because I had a really strong influence of a good friend of mine so i was into math but i was also into lifting weights i know it's unbelievable i'm pretty lean now but i used to be really into lifting weights so it was either you know do something mathy or you know go the um you know personal trainer route and uh, gotcha. i just honestly i got lucky yeah i just selected software engineering and and you just happened to go so you were not going to go to college you were going to become a personal trainer no i was going to go to college and study like you know, whatever the health sciences were. Yeah, and yeah. I would not be where I am today, yeah. for sure. So did you have that interest when you got to college, or was it kind of like a bore at first? Did I have what interest? Like software development. Like, were you like, oh, I'm doing this, but like, I'm, I'm into it, or it was like... I like oh. the idea of... So my favorite movie is the... You know, one of my favorite movies, and it's a very difficult statement to... But is The Social Network. Why? Okay. Here's Mark Zuckerberg. Writes this amazing piece of code, and then... Next thing you know, he's having sex in the fucking bathroom. Yeah. Uh, are we allowed to curse on this? Yeah, yeah. But you, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Um, so, like, he was just, he went from zero to like really cool. And that's all I've really wanted to get in my life. So, that, that's what that, that was like the, the dream. That's what pitched The you. dream is to build something yeah. that impacts millions of people. 
But that was that movie inspired you. That movie is one of the inspirational moments. You know, like wow, this guy's cool. Like, and and so, <laughs> so yeah, I, I, I so I started coding, uh, twenty, um, thirteen. Okay. And like by twenty fourteen, I was like, okay, I know how to code, mm-hmm. which is one of the big things that we talk about is like the ability yeah. to code. Yeah. And then it wasn't until like 2015, 2016 where it's like, okay, now I know how to code. Let me apply that knowledge to actually building projects. And yeah. I, I got my first role in 2015 okay. uh, working part-time while I was in school yeah. and then graduated. And just So would you say that um, there's a type that, that can get involved with computer science? Because I know it's like a different, I don't want to say a different beast, but like to go and get your degree in computer science versus just learning a coding out of like a code boot camp or a mentorship like art like uh, Florida full stack do you think there's like a different type of person that has to that can go to college and actually do computer science or you think anyone can kind of do it the same way anyone can kind of come get a mentorship or, or a code school um you're going to be hit if you go the college route you're going to be hit with a lot of mathematical theory mm-hmm. right so you're going to have to take at least calc 2 mm-hmm. at least diffy q pretty sure linear as well linear yeah. algebra um and then you're going to be subjected to a class like operating systems, yeah. which can get pretty difficult. So, are you are you good in high school, uh, and you are willing to sacrifice and just no life it? Yeah, computer science would be a great degree for you. Um, if you want to go to a code school and take a court, uh, shortcut, you're you can do that as well. It's all about you know the energy that you put into it. So, um, yeah. I think if you struggle to get things done in high school and you have this optimism about going into college and kind of giving the same amount of effort yeah. and go after computer science, I don't think I don't see that panning out. Mm-hmm. Um, but with this regard between code schools and um, colleges, you can ask a lot of people and some of the best engineers, hardest working, you know, highest paid mm-hmm. come from code schools. You know, you yeah. don't need a degree. And um you know, it's like uh, my buddy Brett, like doing great. Never, never went to, uh, yeah. you know, get computer science degree. So, um, yeah, that makes sense. I mean, a lot of, um, uh, how do you call them? Uh, financial advisors, a lot of them don't get their degrees in finance or accounting or business. Some of them don't have college degrees. They go and get their certifications and they do really well. Um, it's not the same parallel, obviously, because software development's a different type of industry, but it's kind of like that, uh, that thing like you don't have to go to college necessarily to be successful in an area it i think it helps a little bit um maybe maybe you can expand on how would a software development degree help you in the field just more about knowing about the theory and the lingo type of thing um sure i think it's going to help you on the interview stage i think you there's some holes from the theoretical perspective that you would encounter in like the interview stage and maybe on the job but Again, it you can you can kind of learn all of that, um, and so long as you're not doing some complex algorithm for like machine learning yeah. purposes or data mining, uh, you're you're gonna be okay. You're saying most roles out of most roles you can learn. Get most into. software engineering roles, you are you don't have to be a genius. You just need to know how to code. You don't need to be some mathematical savant. Gotcha. So, and that's why it is a good choice to go to a code school. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I guess I could talk a little bit more about how to properly approach going to a code school if you like. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so if you're going to go to a code school, you need to ask yourself, like, is this something I want? Is this something I'm willing to sacrifice my free time? Um, it is not a situation where you can just kind of show up and expect results. Um, it's more so you show up and you have the right support around you, and you have to put the time in outside of class. And and, and, and if you do that, going to a code school is going to be probably one of the best financial decisions you've ever made. If you go to the code school, and you show up, and you wait a night before the homework's due to do the homework, and you don't like seek any outside information, and you're not, and, and you're not really sacrificing your free time, and you're still like trying to party and all that, it's probably not going to work out unless you just catch on to things really well. So um, just be careful because you will have code schools that take your money and they pitch you the dream. They pitch you the dream, start making X amount of money and you're like, wow, really? And then you hand over a lot of money because it's not cheap 
And next thing you know, you're about to graduate and don't yeah. really know how to code. Well, it's because the teacher didn't look you in the eye and say, you need to get your shit together. And yeah. so that's really my big, as Matt knows, like that's, yeah, yeah. that's what I, that's the I, pitch. That's what yeah. I stand for, for Florida full stack is like, I'm not going to look at you in the eye and lie to you because I don't need your money. And, and the thing is, is like um, a lot of places will pitch the dream and you have to put work into it somehow. Like there's no, you, I mean, think about going to the gym. Like you can't go to the gym for four months and, and expect to, to go and become a professional bodybuilder. You got to put the time. Like, I think just time is a really important thing too. You have to put the time in even either outside of what you're doing or lengthwise. Like, and I found that to be helpful in any skill. Like if you try to rush any skill, you're not going to, you know, it's very difficult to, to grasp something unless you say you just get it right away. And I think that a lot of people don't realize that as a, as one of the things like when they want to get into software development is like you were telling me the other day, you're like, yeah, if you don't like debugging and doing all this stuff, for example, um, you, you're going to hate your job. So like either, I, either like I, it or get out. I constantly say that I, I see the students, they'll be like sitting here and they, they don't like what they're currently experiencing, which is why isn't it working? And I need to figure out the next step. I saw you yesterday, for example, yeah. you did great. Mm-hmm. Like you were able to see what's wrong mm-hmm. and then perform the necessary steps to figure out what's wrong about it. Yep. That's it. That's all. That's all you're getting paid for. Yep. And that's why we make money. It's because we're willing, we're, we're willing to kind of like bash our heads against something. Yeah. And that's, that's the thing too. When you said about making money is like, it's weird. Cause it's one of the only, it's one of the only things you can do right out of college and make good money. Mm hmm. Like accounting, for example, you got you're going to be making fifty five, sixty thousand for you know maybe one or two, or three years, and it'll take you probably five years to get up to six figures. Mm-hmm. And if you graduate with a software development or computer science degree, with I, I mean, I'll let you expand, but sure. within a couple months of good practicing, interview questions, and building a portfolio, you could be making well over six figures for sure. Um, if to get a sense of just how much money you can make as a software engineer, or just in the tech space in general, people. Uh, think like, oh, if I want to get into the tech field, I have to learn how to code. But uh, you can also be a product manager, scrum master, anything. Um, you can also get into sales, of course. Um, you go to levels.fyi, not .com, but levels.fyi. And what it allows you to do is look at uh, all the big companies or just you know, large size companies and see at each level, the year of experience and what their offer is. It's a, it's a, you know, it's a crowdsourced, um, uh, I think you showed platform. us platform. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's like, wow, really? Mm-hmm. So, um, the sky's the limit. And a lot of getting those types of salaries has everything to do with being able to perform, uh, on the interview. Mm-hmm. So the interview is a big part of getting big paychecks. Yeah. And, and that's why the process is kind of extensive for a lot of companies, right? Because they vet and vet and they really want to hone in on the right person. But for the average, you know, individual who maybe didn't go to college or, you know, maybe is struggling with their degree, maybe they got a degree in like, I don't know, I don't want to diss any degree. So like just a generic, you know, degree or whatever people get nowadays, even like accounting, for example, like, you know, uh, we talked about this before, but like a degree like accounting or finance, people are like, oh, it's a great degree. But, you know, sometimes not really. You get out of college and you have offers for like 45000 50000 sure. but you get to work every day, you know, eight to six. Mm-hmm. And it's like, it's a lot of mundane and redundant stuff and it's not fulfilling right away. I think you're going to see a lot of people start going after software engineering. Yeah. A lot of people. Mm-hmm. And because it's just great. Yeah. And what's awesome about this situation though is that people still think it's hard because of the movies. Yeah. Because the movies, would, the movies are like, I'm in. I'm in. <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah, and it's like, oh, this guy's a genius. Yeah, nah, he's not that smart. Trust me. Yeah, and it's crazy because the what we know from the code mentorship slash mm-hmm. code school is so abstract to ninety nine percent of the population. It's nuts. Like even even just learning how to like inspect element and that was like the first day thing is like inspect element, and change the web page. Some yeah. people will, will freak out. Most yeah. people will freak out. Yeah, I mean, but even that's kind of gaining popularity. I've seen a lot of TikToks where yeah. people are like, oh, you, a lot of people know like the right click inspect element. Congratulations, you know how to use software. Um, but it, so yeah, I, I see a lot of people transitioning to software engineering. And the good news, like I said, is that people are still afraid to learn it. Mm-hmm. 
don't be afraid. Yeah. Don't be afraid. You don't have to be a genius. But what you do need to be able to do is fall and get up, fall and get up. And that's that's the rest of your life, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> and the better you get, the less you fall. Yeah, and, and I think a good thing about learning how to code is like being part of like a, like I guess like a, a community that's that's seen as like, because we always say like, you always say it's like people think it's so hard, but it's really not. And you have that level of like, when you walk into a room and you're a developer, I'm sure you felt this before. You you almost feel like, and not to not not to be like an ego boost or anything, but you feel like one of the smarter people in the room, and you feel like you can kind of attack the problem. Let's say in a business meeting in a different light mm-hmm. than most people can, because they don't have the same skills or the same, you know, um, knowledge that you have. Yeah, I don't want to get on a passionate rant about how I feel about other people, yeah. <laughs> but generally, I think a lot of time is spent talking and not taking mm-hmm. action. I'll yeah. just leave it there. Yeah, but um, even even like the way you approach some problems, like in in the, the stuff, the limited projects we worked on together uh, in our professional setting, mm-hmm. uh, you have like a different take almost when you have that mindset of problem solving because it's like a skill. Like you always you always hammered that down to us. It's like you need to learn how to code. You need to learn how to problem solve, and and that's what I think helped me break down a lot of my barriers to, to learning how to program. Cause I've tried on my own for a couple months before, like you knew, and I struggled because I had that like mindset of this, this shit's hard. Like this is so confusing. You know, why is this name this or whatever? Mm-hmm. And you're like, no dude, you just need to learn how to code. And once you learn how to code, it's like you figure it out. Yeah, yeah. And that's, that's a concept. I don't see a lot of people push online, people pushing like, you know, yeah. teaching HTML and CSS, like you said, but they don't push people to, they show you how to use an arrow function, for example, but like, why are you like you would ask me why are you watching a video on uh on fetch requests like when i first started learning you're like dude you need to learn how to code and that's yeah. that's what changed exactly. that's changed that's my it. game so if you want to explain that sure so people are obsessed with these buzzwords right um oh i i oh should i learn this language or this one that's a question i get oh should i learn python or java or should i learn javascript or should i'm just like just pick one mm-hmm. and 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 make sure that if i ask you a question that you can answer that question. And so good resis- resources for that would be the um, code, uh, was it not code academy? Um, That'd be the resource. Hack, it, no, ha- Hacker Rank. Okay. Hacker Rank has a lot of basic problems. So when you can start solving those basic problems, now you're becoming a little bit more fluent in a particular language. But to expand on basically uh, what Matt was saying is that there's this obsession on the technologies and not so much the, the the ability to code. So people were like, okay, I'm going to learn HTML first. Then I'm going to learn CSS. Then I'm going to learn JavaScript. Then I'm going to learn Python. Um, how about learn how to code? Mm-hmm. Then build something. It's 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 the it's that's what comes first. Yeah, yeah, and it, it, it honestly uh, hindered me a lot because I, like when I first started learning how to code, you told me you know learn HTML and CSS, but but learn how to code. And you'd always say that, and we didn't, weren't super close at that time, so I didn't know what that meant. And I would learn all these weird things in, in CSS and HTML and like, oh, that's cool. But, mm-hmm. you know, when you get down to the what what pays the bills is learning how to code. And that's learning how to problem solve. Mm-hmm. Evidently. Yeah. It's like, OK, so if you don't know what a function is, mm-hmm. OK, in, in programming, um, how are you going to use fetch, mm-hmm. which is a function? Mm-hmm. And it's a function that returns a promise yeah. not to get too technical here. But how do you know what to do with that? Um, if you don't know what a promise is. So it, it, it's like, okay, well, I need to take a few steps back. So people try too quickly to, um, they start too early into like, hey, I want to build something as opposed to let's learn how to code first. Yeah, so. and I think that's one of the best things you did for us was teaching us each individual aspect of the language and asking us questions about each aspect. For example, like for loops and um, learning how to use functions and, and those basic questions, like even like, uh, uh, if statements with the three equal signs versus two, like just simple things mm-hmm. like that that people look over, and I feel like a lot of the YouTube videos and content out there, it's not so organized to where you can kind of find those basic videos. You kind of just look up some buzzwords that you found that might be helpful for what you're trying to, like you said, trying to build stuff, mm-hmm. and you skip over those things. And then when people are writing code, you're like, you know, what the fuck is this? But in reality, if they would have learned that. Mm-hmm. It would have been a lot easier for them to understand the whole thing. Because yeah. now when I watch tutorials online, I'm like, I know what they're writing. I watch a little bit. I'm like, okay, you got that. And let me move on to my own thing. Mm-hmm. Before it was like, you know, and I know you've, you've seen me do this. And a lot, of, a lot of people that are trying to learn on their own will know this. You're watching a video and you're literally have to pause because, you know, 
they wrote uh, a parameter in the function. You're like, where is this? And you realize mm-hmm. you can write fucking, you know, p- penis or whatever, you know, yeah, you write whatever yeah, you want you, in there. It, there's, there's so like yeah. you can name any variable, yeah. whatever you yeah. want. And, and that's if you don't understand those concepts, mm-hmm. you get super confused. Yeah. Why is that named response? Yeah. Well, it, he named a response because that's a good name for what that um, what that variable represents. But yeah. it could have been X, could have been Y. Exactly. Um, sorry about that. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Um, let me ask you this question. Um, we'll, we'll reset the cameras um, and then we'll, mm-hmm. we'll start over. But um, what's your what's your opinion on uh, on getting a job after like a code school? Like, what, what do you like? Do you think people are ready for that or how long should they spend before they you know get involved? Get in the shit job. Yeah. My first role was 13, 13 or 14 dollars an hour. And it was, uh, this was back in 2015, like I stated previously, but um, it was HTML, CSS, JavaScript, PHP. And it was just, I was the only engineer and it was just trash, you know, and um, but good, you want that. You've got to potentially sacrifice. If you want to hop right into the 50K a year, 60K, 70K a year, if you want to try and hop right into that job, it can work, definitely. Or get a little experience. Work part-time at your current job. Yeah. Sacrifice reason. for, what, three, four, five months. Yeah, so you're talking about getting kind of like eating shit, and that's a lot of the, the stuff I talk about sometimes too is like you have to like kind of eat shit for a little while before you get good at something, and that's like with anything. And I know people pitch the dream of like four months and then you're going to get 100K a year. But Mm -hmm. in reality, that doesn't happen to, I mean, maybe 1% of those people that go to those code schools. I think we have to be careful though, because I mean, I think some, I think it's a higher percentage than that actually. Um, And some code schools are really fucking good. Some of some, so like we're right now, we're seven and a half hours per week in person. Mm -hmm. Some of these programs are five days a week, fully immersive. Okay, and so like if if you're dropping twenty thousand dollars on a fully immersive, of course, and then okay, maybe then we see you land that big role immediately. But that's, I mean, like you said, that's every single day, nine mm-hmm. to five, going to school, like you're in a university. A lot of people I've seen online is like these uh, these ads are like get my my class online, and people think, and I've taken the classes, I've taken them on LinkedIn Learning, and. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's just me. I would say that I'm, I don't want to toot my own horn, but I'm a little bit above average with the intelligence, maybe, you know, even considered smart, even trying to do those on my own. It's very difficult if you don't have someone that's kind of like there for you as a mentor, you know, I think it's important to have that, you know, kind of collaboration with somebody else. And that's a big thing in the, in the industry anyway, right? Collaborating with people on your team. Yeah, definitely. Um, you're going to be coding with people all the time, figuring things out. You're never alone in the software industry. Like, and that's why a lot of things can be learned on the job, but it's your ability to figure things out and ask questions at the right moment. What did you, so um, for example, um, when someone comes to me and says, I'm lost. Okay. What have you done? Um, and what's the problem that you're encountering basically? Uh, what have you done so far? What have you tried? Uh, and and do you think that that has gotten, do you, I don't know how to put this because you've been in the industry for for a little time now. Mm-hmm. You've you your role is a little different now, but let's just say, for example, uh, when you were working, can I say where we worked at? Sure. When you were working at Indeed, because you were more like senior at that point, mm-hmm. would you say the collaboration is a little different when you're in those higher level positions versus like getting into it like at the, the start? No, I mean, uh, with a senior level role, you're definitely mentoring people mm-hmm. a little bit more. Um, Indeed is a very um, you know, the, the expectations are high at certain companies. And I'd say Indeed's definitely one of those, at least the team that I was on. Mm-hmm. Um, so you don't, you're, you're dealing with very, very, very fast moving people. And there's a level of accountability um, that, um, but yeah, there's the collaboration is everything. Design is everything. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a process called um, like design documents, mm-hmm. which is basically like we look at a problem we're trying to solve or a feature we're trying to build and let's create a design document and then everyone kind of submits their comments on what they think is the right uh, course of action to take. Because when, when, when developing software, there's always going to be trade-offs. Uh, yeah. What technology to use? Um, uh, you know, 
what what programming paradigm, if you will, we're going to follow, um, and why. And so it's it's a very collaborative uh, environment for sure. Yeah, definitely. And uh, um, that's one of the things though too is like just having people or community or someone to bounce things off of has been really helpful for me because a lot of things that are like so dumb and and they're like right in front of your face. What do you used to call it, a rubber duck or something yesterday? Yeah. So the rubber duck. Uh, you can Google it like rubber duck software engineering. You can Google it. And it basically refers to when someone calls you over to your desk and it's like, yeah, I'm trying to figure this thing out. And, you know, I tried to do this and I tried to do that. And, and then because you're talking to me, mm -hmm. you're going to solve the problem. And I don't even have to say a word. I'm just a rubber duck. I don't say a single word. Yeah. Or maybe I'll be like, well, did you do that? Yeah. And you're like, yeah, I did that. But, uh, oh, wait a second. Yeah, and then it's like, it yeah. clicks. Yeah, and it may happen to me yesterday with you. Mm -hmm. uh, it happens with, with other people in the, in the code school. It's um, it's a it's a weird concept, and I don't I don't know. Maybe there's a psychological aspect to it. Maybe it's not just with software development, but it, it's 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 happened a lot more doing this because mm -hmm. maybe maybe in the past, all the things I've tried to pursue, like you know, I'm trying to pursue my CPA, but I've already done all that before, so it's more like review and like I can kind of figure the concepts out because I have the knowledge. Mm -hmm. But doing something new, you kind of feel like a deer walking on their first legs you're kind of wobbly sometimes and just having that that community or that mentor um for for me as you is really helpful and, and so when you lose something yep. what are you supposed to do backtrack your steps exactly just talk yeah. out loud and yeah. that's a skill though that's a skill a lot i mean i i don't do it a lot too sometimes i'll get so frustrated and i'll, I'll be trying to figure something out maybe not not just with software development but anything but if, if you just consult with someone for five minutes and you just kind of talk out what you mm -hmm. did it's it for me it's super helpful mm -hmm. and a lot of people i feel like it's helpful too definitely um definitely. but um i wanted to also get your opinion on on this is gonna be funny we can kind of move over to some more friendlier topics the blockchain and, and bitcoin and all that stuff because you have a different opinion on it than the general public and and maybe how learning about software development can help people open their eyes about the concepts of of the blockchain because you've opened my eyes to a different, yeah. you know, I was pitched, a lot of people are pitched this one thing. It's the best thing that's ever existed. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, the next obviously huge thing and there's a big industry around it. But then there's also people that understand like yourself, like mm -hmm. the really nitty gritty stuff about it. And they have, mm -hmm. you know, differing opinions. Yeah. I, I am by no means a crypto expert. Um, but I think any software engineer at this point probably has... Uh, read a little bit about cryptocurrency and the blockchain and stuff like that. And it really is something for software engineers. Um, you know, we talk about like Ethereum, for example, yeah. it's for developers. Yeah. Um, so kind of going back to one of the first things we talked about, which was like why you should learn how to code as a business owner, as someone who's trying to get ahead as anything. A yep. success oriented individual um uh, if you don't understand how to like utilize for example ethereum then why are why are you investing in it um i think a lot of people are just blindly putting money into um uh, projects mm -hmm. and don't necessarily understand anything about it yep. and because of that it's like it, it feels like a ponzi scheme yeah. Uh, no, I don't, <laughs> I don't want to like say it is a Ponzi scheme or yeah. it's not, um, like a really cool project is like, in my opinion, it's Filecoin. I like Filecoin. And so I'll tell you why I like Filecoin. I like Filecoin because it's an incentive to participate in a network where you offer up, uh, parts of your hardware, your disk space, I believe, um, uh, and so for, for other people to use. And you might have heard, I believe it's IPFS or IFPS, but it, 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 it's basically the, um, the Web 3.0 storage system. It's how, it's how files are stored. Um, and so Filecoin, it makes sense. You offer up some portion of your computer to be utilized, and therefore you should be rewarded for, for that. That to me makes sense in a web three technology space. Gotcha. Okay. All the other shit coins, I don't understand. So like I can go on and on about like yeah. blockchain and like why to me it's, um, it's really about software engineering. It's all about uh, distributed systems, uh, software engineering. 
Um, and I think there's just a, this idea that you're investing in a coin and that it's a stock and it's, yeah. it's just, it's yeah. not good. And a lot of people, you can put your money in there and make money. I'm not saying you can't make money on your investments, but at the same time, it's like, I don't want to have a conversation with someone that's like, oh, crypto is the next thing, big thing, or like blockchain's the future. It's going to change everything. And then you sit down, you have a conversation. I'm like, okay, well, how is it going to change everything? How, <laughs> how is, how are yeah. NFTs going to change anything, everything? Yeah. No, I mean, and, we and, had that conversation. Yeah, and no some like, yeah, I'll keep rambling, but some proponents of like NFTs, for example, I want to sit them down and really ask them, <laughs> how is the NFT going to change things? Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. And you told me a lot of people don't know that it's been around for a while. Like that 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 technology, right? Um, the blockchain has been like the Bitcoin uh, has been around for a while. I right? don't what, Bitcoin, what, 2019? I, dude, I have no idea. I uh, have no idea. Know, maybe it's, 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 else. But it's, it's a... But you said the way that the, the technology is structured is is not a new concept. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. I yeah. see what you're saying. Well, in, in, with regard to NFTs. So here's my thing about NFTs. Um, the NFT says you own particular digital asset mm -hmm. okay when you upload a photo yep. to facebook or instagram that photo is associated with your profile you own that profile why well because there's an authentication layer okay you got to put your fucking username and password mm -hmm. in or whatever right that's that's the centralized version of what an nft is um you're just a record somewhere. It's a record that you own. That you own. That you own. Because. And I think the cool thing about the NFT, mm -hmm. from, from, from what I understand, right, yep. is that this is a public ledger yep. that can't be messed with. And therefore, it exists in its entire, you know, for history on yeah. end. And then you have the royalty component, um, which is cool as well. But. But you told me, is it really public? Because they're all living somewhere, right? With the whole Amazon, how they have a lot of different computers and Google. Remember we talked about that? Mm -hmm. How essentially, even if it's distributed, they own the mass majority of the distribution centers per se. Maybe you can explain it better. You um, you know, I think I think the individual who owns the most computers, um, I think if, okay, let's say you and I started a blockchain. Yep. And we installed a computer right here. Yep. We call it the Water Buffalo blockchain, <laughs> Okay. And we installed a server right here. Remember, a server is a computer. Yeah. And we're like, okay, this is the first node. Okay. Okay, and we're, we, we you start pushing content. Like, hey, like we've got, you know, this new blockchain. And it um, and, and we want you guys to participate. Please invest and in, uh, all that nonsense. We're, in, 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 in theory, we're effectively in control because we have, in this case, like one node, um, one computer participating in the network. Yeah. Um, and so if we added a hundred servers in this, then again, now we're in control. We have all, we have a hundred computers and maybe there's 101 computers participating in this network. Yeah. We own a hundred of them. And so, um, how isn't that centralized? Cause we currently oh. are, are in control of all hundred. And, and, and again, I don't want to go too far because I could be completely wrong with what I'm saying. Yeah. And that, and that's the <laughs> thing. It's like. Who the fuck knows? Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, uh, it's like it's so confusing yeah. in many regards. And you're gonna put your money into that. That's the whole point of a Ponzi scheme. Yeah, they get you to they get you to not understand it, but also get you to um, kind of feel as though you're missing out if you don't put your money into it, and yeah. then you put your fucking money into it. Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, but it's interesting because like when you talk to most blockchain experts, they don't know like what's actually going on and i'm not i don't know shit but at least you have a little bit more of an understanding of like okay if i'm going to invest in this coin like what is it actually doing you can read like the i remember you showed us like they have like a repository where you can actually send i mean they're not going to accept the updates to the bitcoin blockchain, oh yeah right? like bitcoin is public you know public you can read the source code yeah yeah interesting stuff interesting stuff um i think another cool project was like the internet computer and this is like a project that's going to use all of the resources of a bunch of computers to serve um, network requests. Like, um, you know, when we talk about Web 3.0, it's a decentralized um, yeah. way of building websites that you can do right now just by using, like, for example, Google, GCP, Firebase, mm -hmm. right? Firebase. Yeah. Um, so at the end of the day, is is our... our 
our lives, are they going to change? Not necessarily, because everything that you can do in the uh, in the Web 3.0 world, you obviously can do in Web 2.0, um, which is what we're used to. Gotcha. So until there's like a huge reason, like un- unless I'm missing something, I always and this is why I always give respect to the crypto guys. Yeah. I'm like, listen, you I mean, can they make expl- a lot of money. What they make a lot of money, so who the crypto the crypto the guys, guys that create the coins, the the, well, the software engineers that are coming up with these distributed uh, system algorithms. That I mean, there's people out there that say that they know what they're talking about and they clearly have no idea. Mm-hmm. But then there's also people out there that n- mm-hmm. know what they're talking about. And they're I software don't, engineers. Yeah. And they do well. Oh, shit. You're right. That's, that's my phone. They, and they, <laughs> they, they do well for themselves. Yeah, yeah. But, um, I mean, no hate here. I just wanted to get your perspective on that. And I think some people might find it interesting. And um, would you encourage people that are investing in the blockchain to, like, kind of figure it out? Like, go look at what you're actually investing your money into or... Um, I would say probably, I, I, look, Warren Buffett, does he put his money into cryptocurrency, in Bitcoin? No. no. I, is Bitcoin digital gold? I mean, I don't know. Like, what, what are you, <laughs> it, it is, if it goes up, you're happy, right? I don't, I think what you're, you're dealing with an append only ledger that ensures that there are, are not people that can fuck with it. Yeah. That's the algorithm. Okay? Is that something you want to invest in? Yeah. That's, a, that's your prerogatory, if you or whatever the word is. Yeah. So. I think it, blockchain is a technology and cryptocurrency. I don't know. I think it's a bunch of bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's, uh, uh, but like I said, there are projects. Like Filecoin. That makes sense to me. Get paid to participate yeah. in the ecosystem. Things like that make sense to me. How long do you think it would take someone to, to get to your level of knowledge with, within the software development industry? You think you do it faster than what you've been doing yeah, it for, what, 10 years? No, no, no. I've been doing it for, well, like I said, I started coding. But, like, I, you could say my experience started in 2015. So, what is that? Seven years? Yeah. Um, You can get to where I'm at. I'm not. I, you can get to where I'm at in a year easily. Yeah. But you're pretty smart. I mean, like... Oh. Yeah, I, I, I don't, think I don't necessarily right. I, think so, but well, I think that outside of like our our uh, conversation, I think a lot of people like understand that you're a pretty smart dude. Like outside of our like personal talks, yeah. people, which is a good thing. I mean, you want people to perceive you and your hard work as uh, you know you put effort into it. It's not mm-hmm. like you just you always talk about it. Like you not you didn't just wake up one morning and you know make good money. It's yeah. like you took a long time to get there. Yeah. I think that uh, that's important for for anybody. It's the so. same as lifting weights. It's the same thing. And Andy Frisella talks about that all a lot. Is like if people could just take what they have in bodybuilding and apply it to business, you know, they would win. But for whatever reason, they don't. Yeah. Um, I think that's Andy that said that. I love Andy. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, some people can. I try to do it. Like, I obviously, I lift weights and try to stay in shape. And I try to apply that to life. But it's all about taking action and applying your your knowledge or your wisdom or your hard work and actually applying it to your life. If you don't apply it, then it's not going to work. Like you can go to a code school, like you said, and you can learn all the basics and whatever, but if you don't actually go and practice and apply that into something, then you're not going to make it anywhere. Mm-hmm. It's not like you, you know, you learn a couple, a couple weeks or a couple months and then you can just go get a job for making 150,000. It's not like that. Yeah. yeah. You have to, you have to put in the work, you have to put in the time. And if like, I mean, I'm very extreme. Like, I don't drink alcohol or anything like that. And, like, one of the things I always ask people our age is, like, how old are you? Oh, you're 24. Okay. Uh, So you've been having a lot of fun for 24 years. Yeah. A lot of fun. Growing up in this amazing country and, you know, um, fucking around at lunchtime and playing on the playground and then going to college, doing drugs and, like, partying. Like, We've all had a lot of fun. At what point is yeah. it time to grow up and maybe sacrifice just a little bit? Yeah, and I think I think that age is being pushed back a lot as we get older. We're seeing a lot of people like, you know, they push their. A lot of people. I mean, I'm not trying to knock anybody or anything. People live your own life, but a lot of people don't ever lose that. And that's one of the, the bad things about going to college is that like if you don't have a strong mindset, a lot of people I know went into college never party, never drank. They got involved in that, and then after they get out of college, like. They're they're trying to live that that high through the rest of their life. I don't know if you've like I know I know in college you probably had some fun and stuff, but yeah. you know once you get out you're like, you know most most sane reasonable people will be like all right that was fun, but let me move on and like you said kind of oh yeah on. you're saying some people get stuck in that loop yeah they, sure. they never get out 
and sure. for, the, for the rest of their lives they're like it's like ingrained in them and even but i was saying like before then like i know kids in high school that went to college and they were never party people i mean they do well they're smart for themselves but they lose a lot of time and a lot of like what i would find is like mental peace after they graduate because they they feel like they have to keep living this lifestyle forever and it costs a lot of money to do that stuff mm -hmm. it's a lot of money to go out and fucking get bottles and do drugs and you know, try to have a nice uh, appear appearance when you're out in the town, have a nice car. Like you say, mm -hmm. you, you got to kind of live live humble too. And you know. I forget who it is, but it's been probably said by a million people. Um, I feel like it was some bodybuilder. I don't know. Because um, they're the best. I mean, honestly, like I really love Jay Cutler. Like I think I've told you that. Yeah, Jay Cutler's like, great. Like he's just, he just works hard. I mean, look, you know, he's just a hardcore guy. And uh, it, it, no, it boils down to like when you when you're doing things that are different than everybody else, I forget, you know, when, when you look around and everyone's doing something that you're not doing or, or you're spending your time differently than everyone else, that's when you know you're on the right path. Mm -hmm. So yeah. if you're out, you know, doing the normie thing on Friday, Saturday night, uh, if you feel obligated to do something on Halloween just because it's Halloween and yeah. you're not like, being like oh hunkering down and like learning something on the internet or like in the gym or you know writing something for a blog or you know anything anything yeah and 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 i'll hit on this point and then we can kind of wrap it up too um i think a lot of people though they do underestimate time too because you've been in this software development game for seven years and mm -hmm. that's not like you know a lifetime's worth of time but it's a good amount of time and now you're at a point or maybe a couple years ago you're at a point where you're like wow i'm doing really well you know i'm doing well for myself but it, it didn't it wasn't like one year it's not like one year in your life is completely no. different it takes time and um i think the the if people if people have ever tried to learn actually learn something and use it in life like even the gym like i can't just go work out for four months and then be swole for the rest of my life i gotta keep working out you know what i mean if i if i stop working out then what about know. um just off top kind of on topic yeah. what about the uh, muscle memory and can you talk a little bit about that yeah like, sure but yeah i mean muscle memory is real like, but that it's kind of, it's, it's a weird concept because you can, you can kind of relate the gym to anything in life. If you really look deep and, and like, when I say the gym, I mean like for someone's fitness journey, you can work out really hard for a couple of years and then come back to it five years later. And yeah, you'll be able to get the, you, you'll be able to build that muscle faster than if someone back to where you were than, than someone just starting from new, but it's still going to take, it still takes time. Muscle memory is a thing, but the more time you stay away from it, the harder it's going to be. And that's all, that's really all just because you have muscle cells that live within, you know, once you repopulate and grow cells, they don't really go away unless you're like starving yourself or, you know what I mean? As long as you're keeping a maintained weight with where you're at muscle wise, like if I were to stop working out at 200 pounds for the next two years and then I started working out again, I probably wouldn't, I probably would be able to get back to where I was within like six months, but I've also been working out for like 10 years. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So if someone works out for like six months and they get, you know, from like, you know, overweight to like good shape. But then they give it up for two years and they try to come back and they've only really worked out six months in their life. It's going to be a little bit harder for them. The same thing with anything, though. Like if I learn to code for the next four months and then I never look at coding or programming again mm -hmm. for five years and I try to get back into it, I'm probably going to have to restart from, from scratch. That's interesting. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, man, it's a really, really interesting podcast and had some good discussions, good topics. Anything else you want to hit on before we close out? Uh, nothing, nothing really. Uh, maybe we can just chat about the the code school for a little bit and just put out some of that information for people to know and like i know we kind of talked about it and glanced over it but you know what would you say to somebody who wants to get into it because we've we've both know people that are like yeah i want to learn how to code but like mm -hmm. what do they need to do before they whether it's you know florida full sure. stack or another code school, what do they need to assess do? your life how do you spend your free time are you willing to give that free time up if the answer is no then save your money Mm -hmm. I think that's the easiest. I think that's if you're if you want it, you gotta want it. Yeah, it's not worth learning how to code on like for like four months and then and then you have to like it's it's like once you start it, you have to keep going, just like working out. Like I, that. Mm, or I mean, would you say? I mean, look, you, you I don't know. I, that's a that's a that's a good question. I don't know. Like, yeah. I don't know what happens if you go for four months and then I, I, it, it's a it's a journey, and and I would be shocked if you like for example, let's say like. You know, I would be shocked if you stop coding. Yeah. Honestly. You're saying me. Yeah, you. Personally. For example, you know, I don't see someone really going all in for four months and then just 
eh, kind of fizzling out. Yeah. Like it's going to just, and there's a bunch to learn. Yeah. A lot of things to learn. Endless information, right? You always tell me you can always, like, yeah. you always can learn something. You can always learn something. You always use new technology, um, always build something. Um, and then, yeah. It's exciting, right? It is exciting. For me, it's exciting. I'm new. I'm new into this this whole game or whatever you want to call it, this, this skill. Mm -hmm. But even after doing it for the years you've been doing it for, it's still exciting to you, right? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I love writing code. Yeah. I think, uh, and, and a lot of people don't. That's great because if you, and this is, this is probably pretty relevant, um, at some point in your career, you're going to have to make a decision. Do you want to continue to code or do you want to get into like people management? Mm -hmm. Do you want to? And so there's a clear, a lot of people are like, I want to code. I don't give a shit. Pay me 500K a year and I will be the best coder in the company. Yeah. Versus pay me 500K a year and I'll be the manager. Yeah. I'll be the director. But you have to have the experience before you become a director. You can't just sure. walk into a company yeah. and not know how to code and say, I want to be. Oh, hell no. Yeah. Yeah, you need the experience for sure. Yeah. But but there's two paths generally. Yeah. Um, you can go coding, coding route or the people route. And the people route you're expected to know how to code and you have the experience of the code, but you've decided to just go that way. Yeah. So all in all, for someone who wants to join something like this, just kind of assess your life, get to know yourself personally. Like if you know that you're not in a space to where you can commit time outside of the seven mm -hmm. hours, whatever, eight hours we do a week, mm -hmm. then it's not going to work out yeah, for you. Yeah. If it's one thing to, I'm glad you showed up to class, but if you don't do anything between this class and the next one, it's yeah. not going to work. Yeah. Not going to work at all. Yep. Yep. Yeah. It's good stuff, man. And just overall, everyone out there watching this video, just like whether you're into this stuff or not, maybe you're not just, I would say like get a, take a, a intro class to learning how to use a computer. Cause a lot of people we know slash we've worked with or, you know, colleagues, friends, a lot of them are afraid of technology. When I say technology, I just mean like programs, for example, like for example, Salesforce, you work yeah. for Salesforce, like, know how to use a software like that if you want to get into business or like Excel or PowerPoint mm -hmm. or, you know, how to read a PDF, you know. I think a lot of, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't know who watches um, or listens, but most of us know it's kind of like the older generation. Um, yeah, but, but even, even then, like I taught Excel for three and a half years at UF and people were so scared to learn it. And they like, like we, we had projects where we had to use like Word and PowerPoint, hook them up to an Excel mm -hmm. sheet and people would, you know, they do great on the word and PowerPoint, but like when it got to numbers, they got so scared. And that's the thing you got. You, someone wrote this for people to use. So it's mm -hmm. going to be easy to use. You just have yeah. to get a, get over the fear of using things. Mm -hmm. It's not too complicated. It's, you know, how do I do, like you said, you always say, how do I do this on Google? And most nine times out of 10, mm -hmm. if you look just within those five results, you'll find your answer. Yeah. Google, Google's, Google's your friend. And yeah. um, basically what's wrong. How do I figure it out? And like, like I said, assess your life. Um, and if you get frustrated at trying to figure things out, it's, it's not for you either. Although that is a skill that you can, can improve on, but if it doesn't, and, and so full circle, like yeah. you come to Florida full stack, for example, yep. if, if in the first month, like I'm getting the vibe that this is not working out, mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you like you either a, this weekend, you need to spend some time, look in the mirror and ask yourself, do you want this? Yeah. Or just quit. Or, or I'm basically, I'm going to request, I'm going to drop you. I'm going to let you move on with your life because you're, yeah. you're not going to be able to do it. And it's not only wasting your time, but it's like wasting the person's time too. Mm -hmm. Because if you're doing something like this, if you're taking the initiative to learn a, a skill like this, mm -hmm. you got to give it your all. Yeah. You know, exactly. Anything in life. Mm -hmm. And I think every other code school in the world is going to keep you around because I want your money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyways, Mac, it's been a pleasure, dude. It's been a great podcast. Good conversation. Thanks, Love man. to have you on again. Maybe talk more casual. Well, in two years, <laughs> two years, this will be like an amazing studio. A nice and, studio. Yeah. Yeah. Fund, funded by JSX software. Yeah. And I'll, yeah. It will be amazing. But yeah, me and Mac, uh, we, we have good conversations outside of, uh, outside of, you know, that work life. We're, 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 uh, I would say he's a good mentor for me. I appreciate his time and always, always help. And, uh, it's been a pleasure. So make sure to go check out uh, Florida Full Stack on Instagram if you get a chance and uh, watch the, the, the mentorship program grow. So, Mac, thanks again, bro. It's See been a man. pleasure. For Max Seeger, I'm Old School Matt. I'll catch you guys on the next Buff Talk. Hey, guys. Thank you guys for checking out this video. Make sure to go check out all of our other podcasts. 
buffalo barbecues, our buffalo workouts, and also a slew of other things, including challenges and whatnot. So make sure to check out all of these different things. Thank you guys for watching. I am Old School Matt here, and this is Water Buffalo TM. Peace. Thank you.